A radioisotope thermoelectric generator is an electrical generator that uses an array of thermocouples to convert the heat released by the decay of a suitable radioactive material into electricity by the Seebeck effect. This generator has no moving parts. RTGs have been used as power sources in satellites, space probes, and unmanned remote facilities such as a series of lighthouses built by the former Soviet Union inside the Arctic Circle. RTGs are usually the most desirable power source for unmaintained situations that need a few hundred watts of power for durations too long for fuel cells batteries, or generators to provide economically, and in places where solar cells are not practical. Safe use of RTGs requires containment of the radioisotopes long after the productive life of the unit. History RTGs were developed in the U.S. during the late 1950s by Mound Laboratories in Miamisburg, Ohio under contract with the United States Atomic Energy Commission. The project was led by Dr. Bertram C. Blanca. The first RTG launched into space by the United States was SNAP-3 in 1961, aboard the Navy Transit 4A spacecraft. One of the first terrestrial uses of RTGs was in 1966 by the U.S. Navy at uninhabited Fairway Rock in Alaska. RTGs were used at that site until 1995. A common RTG application is spacecraft power supply. Systems for nuclear auxiliary power units were used for probes that traveled far from the sun rendering solar panels impractical. As such, they were used with Pioneer 10, Pioneer 11, Voyager 1, Voyager 2, Galileo, Ulysses, Cassini, New Horizons and the Mars Science Laboratory. RTGs were used to power the two Viking landers and for the scientific experiments left on the moon by the crews of Apollo 12 through 17. Because the Apollo 13 moon landing was aborted, its RTG rests in the South Pacific Ocean, in the vicinity of the Tonga Trench. RTGs were also used for the Nimbus, Transit and LES satellites. By comparison, only a few space vehicles have been launched using full-fledged nuclear reactors. The Soviet ROR-SAT series and the American SNAP-10A. In addition to spacecraft, the Soviet Union constructed many unmanned lighthouses and navigation beacons powered by RTGs. Powered by strontium-90, they are very reliable and provide a steady source of power. Critics argue that they could cause environmental and security problems as leakage or theft of the radioactive material could pass unnoticed for years, particularly as the locations of some of these lighthouses are no longer known due to poor record-keeping. In one instance, the radioactive compartments were opened by a thief. In another case, three woodsmen in Georgia came across two ceramic RTG heat sources that had been stripped of their shielding. Two of the three were later hospitalized with severe radiation burns after carrying the sources on their backs. The units were eventually recovered and isolated. There are approximately 1,000 such RTGs in Russia. All of them have long exhausted their 10-year engineered lifespans. They are likely no longer functional, and may be in need of dismantling. Some of them have become the prey of metal hunters, who strip the RTG's metal casings, regardless of the risk of radioactive contamination. The United States Air Force uses RTGs to power remote sensing stations for top ROCC and Sikiglu radar systems predominantly located in Alaska. In the past, small plutonium cells were used in implanted heart pacemakers to ensure a very long battery life. As of 2004, update, about 90 were still in use. Design the design of an RTG is simple by the standards of nuclear technology. The main component is a sturdy container of a radioactive material. Thermocouples are placed in the walls of the container, with the outer end of each thermocouple connected to a heat sink. Radioactive decay of the fuel produces heat which flows through the thermocouples to the heat sink, generating electricity in the process. 
A thermocouple is a thermoelectric device that converts thermal energy directly into electrical energy using the Seebeck effect. It is made of two kinds of metal that can both conduct electricity. They are connected to each other in a closed loop. If the two junctions are at different temperatures, an electric current will flow in the loop. Fuels Inspection of Cassini spacecraft RTGs before launch New horizons in assembly hall. Criteria for selection of isotopes The radioactive material used in RTGs must have several characteristics. Its half-life must be long enough so that it will release energy at a relatively constant rate for a reasonable amount of time. The amount of energy released per time of a given quantity is inversely proportional to half-life. An isotope with twice the half-life and the same energy per decay will release power at half the rate per mole. Typical half-lives for radioisotopes used in RTGs are there for several decades. Although isotopes with shorter half-lives could be used for specialized applications, for spaceflight use, the fuel must produce a large amount of power per mass and volume. Density and weight are not as important for terrestrial use, unless there are size restrictions. The decay energy can be calculated if the energy of radioactive radiation or the mass loss before and after radioactive decay is known. Energy release per decay is proportional to power production per mole. Alpha decays in general release about 10 times as much energy as the beta decay of strontium-90 or cesium-137. Radiation must be of a type easily absorbed and transformed into thermal radiation, preferably alpha radiation. Beta radiation can emit considerable gamma X-ray radiation through Brehm's tralung secondary radiation production and therefore requires heavy shielding. Isotopes must not produce significant amounts of gamma, neutron radiation or penetrating radiation in general through other decay modes or decay chain products. The first two criteria limit the number of possible fuels to fewer than 30 atomic isotopes within the entire table of nuclides. Plutonium-238, Curium-244 and Strontium-90 are the most often cited candidate isotopes, but other isotopes such as Polonium-210, Promethium-147, Cesium-137, Cerium-144, Ruthenium-106, Cobalt-60, Curium-242, Americium-241 and Thulium isotopes have also been studied. 238 Plutonium-238 has a half-life of 87.7 years, reasonable power density of 0.54 watts per gram, and exceptionally low gamma and neutron radiation levels. 238 Pu has the lowest shielding requirements, only three candidate isotopes meet the last criterion and need less than 25 mm of lead shielding to block the radiation. 238 Pu needs less than 2.5 mm, and in many cases, no shielding is needed in a 238 Pu RTG, as the casing itself is adequate. 238 Pu has become the most widely used fuel for RTGs in the form of plutonium oxide. Unlike the latter RTG fuels, 238 Pu must be specifically synthesized and is not abundant as a nuclear waste product. At present only Russia has maintained consistent 238 Pu production, while the USA restarted production at circa 1.5 kg a year in 2013 after a C. 25-year hiatus. At present these are the only countries with declared production of 238 Pu in quantities useful for RTGs. 238 Pu is produced at typically 85% purity and its purity decreases over time. 90 Senior Strontium-90 has been used by the Soviet Union in terrestrial RTGs. 90 Senior decays by beta emission, with minor gamma emission. 
while its half-life of 28.8 years is much shorter than that of 238 Pu. It also has a lower decay energy with a power density of 0.46 watts per gram. Because the energy output is lower it reaches lower temperatures than 238 Pu, which results in lower RTG efficiency. 90 Senior is a high-yield waste product of nuclear fission and is available in large quantities at a low price. 210 Po some prototype RTGs, first built in 1958 by the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission, have used polonium-210. The isotope provides phenomenal power density because of its high decay rate, but has limited use because of its very short half-life of 138 days. A half-gram sample of 210 Po reaches temperatures of over 500 degrees Celsius. 241 americium 241 is a potential candidate isotope with a longer half-life than 238 Pu. 241 am has a half-life of 432 years and could hypothetically power a device for centuries. However, the power density of 241 am is only one quarter that of 238 Pu, and 241 am produces more penetrating radiation through decay chain products than 238 Pu and needs more shielding. Even so, its shielding requirements in an RTG are the second lowest of all possible isotopes. Only 238 Pu requires less. With the current global shortage of 238 Pu, 241 AM is being studied as RTG fuel by ESA. An advantage over 238 Pu is that it is produced as nuclear waste and is nearly isotopically pure. Prototype designs of 241 AM RTGs expect 2 minus 2.2 We per kilogram for 5 to 50 We RTGs design. Putting 241 AM RTGs at parity with 238 Pu RTGs within that power range. Lifespan. Most RTGs use 238 Pu, which decays with a half-life of 87.7 years. RTGs using this material will therefore diminish in power output by a factor of 1 minus 0.51, 87.74, or 0.787% per year. One example is the RTG used by the Voyager probes. In the year 2000, 23 years after production, the radioactive material inside the RTG had decreased in power by 16.6%, i.e., providing 83.4% of its initial output, starting with a capacity of 470 W. After this length of time, it would have a capacity of only 392 W. A related loss of power in the Voyager RTGs is the degrading properties of the bimetallic thermocouples used to convert thermal energy into electrical energy. The RTGs were working at about 67% of their total original capacity instead of the expected 83.4%. By the beginning of 2001, the power generated by the Voyager RTGs had dropped to 315 W for Voyager 1 and to 319 W for Voyager 2. Efficiency RTGs use thermocouples to convert heat from the radioactive material into electricity. Thermocouples, though very reliable and long-lasting, are very inefficient. Efficiencies above 10% have never been achieved and most RTGs have efficiencies between 3 to 7%. Thermoelectric materials in space missions to date have included silicon germanium alloys, lead telluride and tellurides of antimony, germanium and silver. Studies have been done on improving the efficiency by using other technologies to generate electricity from heat. Achieving higher efficiency would mean less radioactive fuel is needed to produce the same amount of power, and therefore a lighter overall weight for the generator. This is a critically important factor in spaceflight launch cost considerations. A thermionic converter, an energy conversion device which relies on the principle of thermionic emission, can achieve efficiencies between 10 to 20 percent. 
but requires higher temperatures than those at which standard RTGs run. Some prototype 210 PO RTGs have used thermionics, and potentially other extremely radioactive isotopes could also provide power by this means but short half-lives make these unfeasible. Several space-bound nuclear reactors have used thermionics, but nuclear reactors are usually too heavy to use on most space probes. Thermophotovoltaic cells work by the same principles as a photovoltaic cell, except that they convert infrared light emitted by a hot surface rather than visible light into electricity. Thermophotovoltaic cells have an efficiency slightly higher than thermocouples and can be overlaid on top of thermocouples potentially doubling efficiency. Systems with radioisotope generators simulated by electric heaters have demonstrated efficiencies of 20%, but have not been tested with actual radioisotopes. Some theoretical thermophotovoltaic cell designs have efficiencies up to 30%, but these have yet to be built or confirmed. Thermophotovoltaic cells and silicon thermocouples degrade faster than metal thermocouples, especially in the presence of ionizing radiation. Dynamic generators can provide power at more than four times the conversion efficiency of RTGs. NASA and O have been developing a next-generation radioisotope-fueled power source called the Stirling Radioisotope Generator that uses Free piston Stirling engines coupled to linear alternators to convert heat to electricity. SRG prototypes demonstrated an average efficiency of 23%. Greater efficiency can be achieved by increasing the temperature ratio between the hot and cold ends of the generator. The use of non-contacting moving parts, non-degrading flexural bearings, and a lubrication-free and hermetically sealed environment have, in test units, demonstrated no appreciable degradation over years of operation. Experimental results demonstrate that an SRG could continue running for decades without maintenance. Vibration can be eliminated as a concern by implementation of dynamic balancing or use of dual opposed piston movement. Potential applications of a Stirling radioisotope power system include exploration and science missions to deep space, Mars, and the Moon. The increased efficiency of the SRG may be demonstrated by a theoretical comparison of thermodynamic properties, as follows. These calculations are simplified and do not account for the decay of thermal power input due to the long half-life of the radioisotopes used in these generators. The assumptions for this analysis include that both systems are operating at steady state under the conditions observed in experimental procedures. Both generators can be simplified to heat engines to be able to compare their current efficiencies to their corresponding Carnot efficiencies. The system is assumed to be the components, apart from the heat source and heat sink. The thermal efficiency, denoted eta th, is given by, where primes denote the time derivative, from a general form of the first law of thermodynamics, in rate form. Assuming the system is operating at steady state and eta th, then, can be calculated to be 110 W, 2000 W equals 5.5%. Additionally, the second law efficiency, denoted eta 2, is given by, where eta th rev is the Carnot efficiency, given by, in which third sink is the external temperature and 363K for the SRG, and third source is the temperature of the MMRTG, assumed 823K. This yields a second law efficiency of 14.46% for the MMRTG.